I'm John Saltzman, Director of Endoscopy at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston and Associate Editor of GIE. Today I'm joined by Dr. Ali Siddiqui of Thomas Jefferson University, and we're going to be speaking about his manuscript, Outcomes of EUS Guided Drainage of Pancreatic Pseudocysts with Debris Using Combined Endoprosthesis and Nasocystic Drain. Ali, why don't you tell us the background uh, to this research? Sure. Thanks, John. Well, what we found over the years is that patients who have pancreatic pseudocysts with debris appear to have a higher stent occlusion and a lesser, shorter, and long-term success rate for pseudocyst drainage as compared to those patients who, who do not have debris. So over the last few years, what we've done is we've changed our practice. Our standard practice before was to place uh, two double pigtail plastics and to drain these uh, pseudocysts with debris. Mm -hmm. Now what we're doing is, in addition to placing the stents, we're also placing a nasocystic tube into these pseudocysts and irrigating them for anywhere between 24 to 72 hours with normal saline. Anecdotally, we, found, we thought that this decreases the rate of stent occlusion and improves our success rate for draining of these cysts. So that said, uh, we we, we had not seen any type of clinical trial really evaluating this anecdotal experience that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us, tell us about the study and how you designed it. So the aim of our study, this was a retrospective study, and really our aim was to compare the outcomes and the ad overall adverse events in patients who had pseudocysts with debris. And we, we looked at them retrospectively and divided them into two groups. The first group was patients who were drained with uh, endoprosthesis, two double pigtail stents mm -hmm. alone, as compared to our other group, which was drained by two double pigtail stents in addition to nasocystic tube irrigation. And we eventually essentially looked at the short-term outcomes, the long-term outcomes, and the adverse events. And tell us what you found mm -hmm. uh, between the mm -hmm. two groups. Well, essentially what we found was that we evaluated 63 patients in uh, our cohort which were drained with stents plus nasocystic tubes as compared to 24 patients which were drained with by stents alone. When we looked at our short-term outcomes, which we defined as a decrease in the cyst size by 30% on imaging studies at one month, we found that patients who had the nasocystic tube had better short-term outcomes as compared to those that were drained by cysts alone. And this change did reach statistical significance with a p-value of 0 0.03. Uh, we also, we looked at the number of stent interventions, uh, stent re-interventions for a variety of reasons, uh, which included uh, not, uh, that, the stent, that the cysts were not getting smaller, that there was mm -hmm. infected pseudocysts yep. or the patient's recurrence of their symptoms. And again, our overall stent, uh, re uh, our overall re-intervention for cysts were 20% in this cohort. And again, what we saw that patients who had a nasocystic tube had a lesser incidence of, re of the need for intervention as those compared to stents alone. When we looked at long-term outcomes, which were uh, imaging in 12 months, mm -hmm. and s there was a greater incidence of patients who had resolution, complete resolution of their pseudocysts in the nasocystic tube group as compared to those with stents alone. So overall, what we uh, overall what we found was is that if you have a pseudocyst with debris, the uh, the patients that have better, shorter, and longer term outcomes are those that had endoprosthesis stents along with the nasocystic drainage as compared to those who had stents alone. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the patient groups again. Mm -hmm. So I, I know pseudocysts and mm -hmm. I know walled off pancreatic mm -hmm. necrosis. Mm -hmm. and this is a group of patients with pseudocysts and a little bit of debris mm -hmm. in it. So can you, can you just clarify sure. exactly the patient population Absolutely. to us? So again, it's there's still a controversy about where somebody calls a uh, a pseudocyst with debris versus a, versus an acute necrotic cavity versus walled off necrosis. So, you know, with, with this and this definition is still, I believe, it's still uh, it's still ambiguous. What we essentially looked at was patients who had a pseudocyst with less with less than uh, twenty five percent of solid debris in mm -hmm. their cyst, as we saw on their initial radiographic imaging studies. 
And do you, um, one thing I found is that the initial radiographic imaging studies don't always show the debris when you do EUS. You may see exactly. more. So do you modify it if you see more we debris do. when you're at the time of the puncture? Absolutely. We would look, we look at these cavity, uh, these cystic, uh, these pseudocysts with the EUS uh, imaging. And again, we would modify our protocol as based on what our EUS findings were. In addition, what we found also useful was that my practice is when I puncture the pseudocysts is also always to aspirate the fluid. One, to make sure that I am in the cavity, and two, to actually have a look at the characteristics of the fluid and give me an idea of how much debris there is in there. And obviously, uh, you know, anecdotally, if, if, if I get back uh, fluid that has a significant amount of debris in it, uh, my practice is always to put nasocystic uh, tubes in these patients along with stents. Now, I know this is an evolving field, mm -hmm. and I'm interested in what your current approach to mm -hmm. these kind of patients. Is it as you're, you're saying in, in the study that you're reporting, or is it continuing to so evolve? So this is continuing to evolve. Uh, one of the th uh, we have a present oral presentation at this DDW where we are evaluating patients who had Waldorf necrosis. And patients who have uh, Waldorf necrosis with a large amount of uh, debris, uh, our protocol is actually now to access a cavity under EUS guidance, dilate the tract, and then irrigate this tract with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, what we believe is that the hydrogen peroxide essentially leads to sloughing off of the, necro of the necrosis and reduces the, uh, the, the, the time that may, that may potentially reduce the time that we need for me mechanical debridement. And also, in some cases, actually obliviate the need for mechanical debridement because the hydrogen peroxide itself will, uh, will adequately cause slough, enough sloughing of the debris. In all these patients, however, we, at the end of the procedure, we leave a stent in there. Our protocol is now to actually put in a fully covered metal biliary stent in because of the larger diameter, and we do put in a nasocystic tube in these patients at the end of the procedure, again, to faci facilitate removal of the debris. So I really believe this is an evolving um, field. You know, one of the issues that we have with the pancreatic necrosis is that we, at this time we do not have adequate tools, so we're still mm -hmm. investigating different modalities for the current tools that we have to improve our success rate with, uh, with Waldorf pancreatic necrosis. Well, great. Well, thank you, Ali, right. for uh, talking with us today in GIE. Okay. Thank you so much.